we're gonna put gutters on. North side of the house, it's time to do water collection. Okay, it's time to put the gutters up on the north side of the building and we're doing this for the sole purpose of water collection. Uh, there's a little ditch in here and the overhang is greater on this side than on the other side. So if the gutters flood, it's not as big of an issue on this side. So here are the tools we're using. We have one drill set up for the pop rivets. We have one set to drive the bolts in. And then we have the drill to the extended bit to get through the wood into the frame, the stud, yeah, the things. And then we changed our, our uh, gutter hooks where we took out the poor excuse for the uh, bolts that come with it. And we upgraded them to the longer and sturdier screws. So that, again, it can reach further back into the wood frame. I don't know why this is taking so long because it's a super huge priority, but so is working. <clears throat> so we're on like day five of simply putting gutters on. I don't know why it's, I don't know, whatever. Let's keep going. So we're kind of finished with the gutters and we're putting a redneck connection together on things that don't belong together. And this is gonna be the first flush. So the water first comes down here. Most of the sediment that's heavier will wash into here first. We do have a valve on there and we'll get a, we'll put a different valve in there when we find one, one that you just open and close. This one's more of a pressure fitting. Well, good morning. Today begins the hot. Right now it's nice and cool. I didn't put my hat on, but it's gonna get hot. So we got some farm chores to do. I've been working a lot on the uh, Backroads Review website where we're taking almost 20 years worth of reviews and putting them all under one roof. That's a big project. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna have to fix the chicken tractor today. Move it, get the chickens under the shade for the foreseeable future. Uh, we have a lawnmower down. So the lawnmower, the main mower, has started leaking. So this valve cover gasket started leaking right here. And this engine's notorious for this, I guess. So we gotta rip that apart and replace that gasket with the kit. Bought the kit from uh, the local farm store. They had it, surprisingly. Oh my gosh, my hair's ridiculous. All right, let's get moving. Finally got the turmeric coming up. Yeah! All right, so I got this new phone app, this iNaturalist with the Seek app. So basically, I don't know what this, this is a weed to me, but what is it really? And pokeweed or, and uh, they're horticulturalists and Arborists and whatever will look at it and verify it. It's kind of neat. It's free. Take a look at it. I'm not going to lie. I've been kind of under... There's just so much to do. There's so much to do and there's just not enough time to do it. 
and uh, you're, you're constantly trying to worry about, you know, making enough money. You're worried about having enough food and water. And it's just, it's mentally exhausting. Gotta have faith, I guess. So let's take a look at the south field here. We got our dwarfed black whale sunflowers. Um, about ready to harvest. Got a few more weeks. We got the regular black whale sunflowers really kicking off now. Uh, the heat's gonna really push those guys up as long as I keep them watered. Peppers are really starting to come along strong. Got a few peppers on the vine. Probably should pick those off. Watermelons are coming up real nice. Those are gonna require lots of water. Squash right here is doing pretty good. The corn, I'm gonna have to pull all that corn out, start a different row of corn, a late season corn crop. I gave lots of corn to my neighbors and their corn is like and then I didn't plant these in time and uh, yeah, my corn never took off. So it's starting to go to seed now and it's only that big. So we gotta pull that all out, start over. I wanted to, I didn't wanna use this, I really didn't wanna use this seed anyway. Um, so I've been, I was lollygagging. This corn crops, this is a super 73 variety. You can see it's coming out. It's yeah. When you don't plant something in time and it goes through its cycle and it has enough time to say, hey, I'm this old, it's time to flower. Um, if you don't get it in the ground, it'll do it dwarf like. Same thing with the sunflowers that happened. So I got two rows here ready to be planted. I'm going to do that in uh, in this new corn crop that I got that's organic and it's an heirloom so it won't taste as sweet but it won't it's as non-gmo as I can get corn and to anybody who thinks not corn can't be non-gmo <laughs> mm, it's hard to find corn that way potatoes over there uh, they're doing pretty good starting to brown out a little bit so I either have a deficiency issue or they got it stormed and they're just too wet the comfrey's doing good this back field is probably full of Bermuda grass because <laughs> you can't stop it but I was putting in barrier rows to start doing silage tarps around the outside of the perimeter so that the stuff can't creep in but like where I tilled last a few weeks ago, you know, that's holding off, but I gotta till this under quick and then try to do it. It's gonna be hot and it's not gonna rain a lot. So this is when I need to till. I need to get it, I need to expose the roots and dry it out so it kills all the weed seed. And then that becomes a fertilizer that drops back into the soil. And then we can take our wood chips and start continually making more rows. Why haven't I done more rows than I have? Because without the watering system in place, I can only plant as much as I can hand water, which is why I haven't put the whole garden in place because I'm one person. And, you know, Jess, she works a normal job. She works a lot. And between the freelance stuff that I do for other people and website stuff and marketing stuff and review videos and it's just we're, we're trying to find our balance here in Arkansas and the new way of living and try to have a plan to get out of the rat race and stop no loans anymore no debt you know that's the goal and we have no more unsecured debt but, you know, there's still some liens on some of the vehicles and we still got the mortgage. So um, we're not out of this yet, but we're getting there. 
And um, going into debt is slavery. It's voluntary slavery. And it is the, it is the worst thing to do is going into debt, in my opinion. Um, it, 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 it turns you into a slave, 100%. But I digress, okay. So we're having deer still coming through here. We've got one deer coming through that just, she's retarded and won't leave us alone. I think, I think the uh, deer were hitting the pear trees or the deer, one singular deer that's somehow just still here. All the rest of the deer go around this property, but one, she jumps the electric fence. She's insistent on being in this property every night. I'm catching her on the cameras every night. And when I put up the noisemakers and all the lights, she has diverted her... <laughs> uh, she like knows how to go around all the lights already. And it's been like four days. So, the fact that I can't just shoot that animal because she's tearing the tops off the sunflowers and that sort of stuff. The blueberries, the fruit trees are all exposed and at risk. If it's brown, it's down. That's what it should be. If I can't deter the, the wildlife, it needs to uh, be eliminated because it's threatening our food security. But the government has rules, government. So we have some blueberries left. I was picking a lot of them. I really like the Duke varieties. Um, they're not as sweet. Um, and then this one's a Climax blueberry. That's very sweet. We've harvested most of the blueberries off uh, the blueberry bushes. There's a few that are still left, but um, yeah. Here's where the uh, rabbits or deer are pulling the heads off the sunflowers. So you can see here in the row of sunflowers where there's a bunch that just went down. <laughs> so funny story, the other day I was watering the elderberries and well, it's not so funny. It's kind of tragic. And the dog came by me to see, oh, say hi. And then she rolled around and rolled into the sunflowers and broke 20 stems. Yeah. She doesn't understand. You know, this is all just grass to her. It's all her playground. So she doesn't, she's never seen a garden yet. So she's learning. And it's like, oh, you dumb dog, Arr! but it's like, how can you blame her? She's never been exposed to that. So it'll just take some training on that side. Let's take a look at some of these uh, noisemakers here. They're kind of cool. I got two different kinds to try out. So these are the fruit trees we're trying to protect. Here's the, one of the sound So it has, <laughs> yeah, it's 130 decibels. Um, keep some of the birds away too. Yeah, it has 13 different sounds and it rotates them. You can set it to a specific sound. You can record um, something you want it to say, but I'd say it goes out 30 to 50 feet for its sensor, how we have it set up right there. And it's solar powered. So we'll post links to those down below. It does work. Um, but like I said, one of the deer, they just go around it, but she's not hitting the, the, the fruit trees anymore. So we were able to see, you know, more growth on the trees, which is what we were looking for between the motion activated lights and the sound and light flashers, the electric fence. I mean, we're, we're taking our steps to try to protect our food supply and we're just learning what the wildlife will adapt to and what it will just give up on. 
Okay, for reals, let's fix this tire on this chicken tractor and move it before it gets super hot. Let's get these chickens in the shade. Okay. All right, this is a review on the Double Tough poultry feeder. It is the five pound unit. We use it in our chicken coop behind us and feeds nine birds. Easily, uh, easy to take the bottom off for cleaning. And then it just slides in over the clasps. It does have a nice hanger with the top. Uh, we've been using it for a few weeks. It's uh, a few months actually. It's held up very well to uh, extreme weather. The label's starting to come off now, so I figured I'd do a review. Um, very nice product. It's Miller Manufacturing out of Minnesota. The, uh, yeah, it's a good unit. So what happened here was the bearing came <clears throat> out of the housing because the rebar isn't a big enough axle. And so when you got torsion on it, it basically just pulls it out. I have extra wheels because I was going to build some more chicken and uh, rabbit tractors. Those are kind of on hold right now. Um, so we'll just replace this one and get this out of here. You can see the bearing came out like that. So we got to fix that. <clears throat> now this completely came out. I'm going to have to put some leg bolt in there or something. So that's still in there. That needs to be pushed in more. Okay. Alright, so we're going to take the uh, fence post. We had some of these laying around, so we'll replace those with these. Another day, another dollar, dollar spent, not a dollar earned. All right, so we got the valve cover gasket on and what we're finding is these top bolts right here, one is sheared off. And so we're gonna have to take the flywheel off and probably just replace this gasket, get new pins, uh, take this back off, check the lifter, clearances um, we have compression it wanted to start but then I noticed this was literally shaking this was all loose and that's notorious on this engine <sighs> yeah. this is not what I had planned for today but we're in there now so we might as well change the fuel filter change the lines clean the carb got it apart might as well uh, do it all at the same time. And I um, hope I didn't uh, score or burn the rings. Because if I did, I'm doing this all for nothing. Um, I didn't want to take the head apart. Because then I'll do something stupid like, oh, I wonder if we can bore this out and redo the cylinder walls, get a bigger piston, and <sighs> that would be silly. It's a lawnmower for crying out loud. So it's no joke, the things you own end up owning you. And so, you know, the boats and the bikes and the e-bikes and all the garden equipment, the tractor, all of this stuff needs service, it needs to be run. So the more stuff you accumulate, the less time you have. 
And there are some things that are great for recreational purposes or like the boat gets us to fishing spots that we couldn't get to in a kayak or by, you know, fishing in a river. So that's, that kind of stuff's important. But uh, we've really tried to reduce the amount of things we own and make our lives not about accumulation of stuff, but rather quality time with the people we want to spend time with. Well, uh, upon further review, uh, the block is cracked on both sides. So, shoot. At this point, I don't know if it's worth saving this engine. Shoot. Well, we're gonna leave the uh, mower for a while. We're gonna rake some hay. Hi, so we're out riding where we usually drop the kayaks. That Jim's Landing is going to be off limits for a little bit. We got some pretty massive trees blocking both the entry and the exit down here. It is um, colossal, massive trees all over the place here, all down. So if you want to put a kayak in, you're gonna to have to uh, Hoist it over the branches. It still looks pretty cool. You got the white river shrouded in fog as the sun goes down. Pretty cool. Enjoying a beautiful evening and sunset with Maddie playing with the radios and checking in with the North Central Arkansas Sustainability Network.